Fan TV, it's Monday night, it's the Fan Zone Show, my name's Phil, we're here live every Monday, just me and you having a good old gossip about everything Leicester City. We've just beaten uh, Warsaw in the FA Cup, I think we've just drawn Birmingham or Blackburn at the King Power in the next round. Sounds like a good draw to me, if you ask me, what do you reckon, can we get through that? And we have got loads of transfer, things that have happened, things that sound like they might be happening, Lots of gossip to get through. So for the next 28 minutes, we want your views, your comments, and let us know everything that you think about Leicester City at the moment. Welcome to Leicester Fan TV. Are you ready for the show? Thanks to our sponsors, ADT Taxis, Everards, Pucka Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Leicester Riders, Hologram, The Fox's Arms, Peter's Pizzeria, Hope Against Cancer, and Newbie and Co Estate Agents. We want your views, we want your comments, so join us live. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's get the first comment in. Keith says, good evening, you bunch of miserable moaning mardis. Thanks, Keith. That's really kicked the show off nicely. Councillor, how are you, sir? Hope you're well. Uh, Sonderax says, we've just made a bid for £12 million, possibly rising to £15 million for Harry Soutar. Do you want to talk about that? Do you want to talk about our new signing, Tete? What do you reckon to a bit of Tete? Is he any good? Um, I've watched some YouTube highlights like you probably all have. Seen some, some good, some some okay i don't know what do you th think we'll see later um matty good evening matty says looks like suter is happening uh sounds good on that mark is saying tete 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 we're actually going to fill Marez's role at last good evening he does he looks like he's got a little bit of the Marez about him mark doesn't he from what i've seen of him should be a little bit more exciting it'd be nice to see it wouldn't it i think it will add a bit of flair maybe to our match do you think he'll start on saturday away at villa mark nick says good evening uh joe hope you well says i take birmingham or blackburn at home yeah i think you can't ask for a nicer draw really anybody at home um it should work patrick is saying yeah it's home against birmingham or blackburn in the cup um get your views in on that adrian says i've heard bards has had a bust up with rogers and is training alone anyone else heard that that's an interesting one adrian i actually believe he's in Adrian so that's what I've heard it is I don't know how long he's out for Jason good evening hope you well hope everything is good are you are we feeling a bit more bubbly now with the transfers we've actually made two signings and there is a couple of other rumors uh Jack Jack uh Harrison is it from Leeds we'll get on to that we've got Tom joining us in a minute Jono joining us Reedy as well so uh Patrick says BS he's injured he's talking about Vardy there um Steve says I'm sure Rogers will destroy <laughs> talking about Tete in there. Uh, Joe asks a question. Let's get Joe's question up where I've just lost it. Uh, um, Joe says, you've got a bit of noise when you speak. Yeah, it's called speaking. I'm sorry about that, Joe, if it's a bit crackly, your end. Um, Kevin says, Cags may be off earlier than the summer. Athletic uh, Madrid is talking about pushing to get him done before. There's a few, obviously, Vestigard as well being linked with with uh, a move to, is it Hertha Berlin? Somewhere like that. Um, I think we need to get a few. And Perez, that's gone quiet, hasn't it, that he's gone in there. Andrew is saying we've made a bid for Harry Suter from Stoke. Yeah, there's lots of that going around, literally, as we just come on. Uh, LCFC Grey saying exciting about the new signings. Now, listen, keep getting your comments in. We're going to get as many in as possible. I'm just going to add in, en masse, Tom, Jono and Reedy. Good evening, everybody. I thought we'd get us all on. Let's start with you, Tom. Um, you were at the match on Saturday. Let, let's pick a little bit of the bones out of Saturday. In the end, it's the result that matters, isn't it, Tom? You can say that, and yes, we're through to the next round, but uh, it was another scary cup tie to be watching. It was very similar to uh, Stockport away that moved the ball, ball so slowly and didn't really create that many chances in the first half. Second half of Bear, and obviously it took to Nacho coming on and getting a deflection to, to score the winner. But 
still need big improvements for me. If we can't, you know, we should be going to a league team, league two team as a Premier team and really, you know, turn them over in my view. Any half decent team would have gone and done that. But look, in fairness, fair play to Warsaw and beaten in 13 going into that one or one defeat in 13 and they gave us a blooming good game. And in fairness, I said it on Saturday, a, a draw would have been a fair result in the end because they had a couple of very good chances. One straight after the missed penalty, what he should have scored, but he bloomed over the crossbar they had. But look, went to the next round, that's all the counts. And that man, who they're talking about, Christian, and he looks a tasty you know, left back so that we've been crying out for no unfair to Thomas but the lad looks differently compared to Thomas in my view what he offered on Saturday straight away Yeah Reedy you were there as well at the match on Saturday do you agree with Tom's take home from from that overall it was <coughs> job done? Uh, yeah obviously it was job done and again any side you play against are lower and they're lower than the Premier League it's always going to for me it's going to be a little tougher opponent sometimes Premier League sides are easy to beat because you kind of know what you're facing but like you say Walsall not lost in 13 um, doing quite well in their league and I, again it's like the Gillingham I just don't think you can take it as an easy game you've got to just make sure you win the game and I thought the performance was okay in the first half and I was like like Tom said it was a lot better in the second half so for me it's just about trying to get players into challenge for positions now to get into the Premier League. Jono, um, Birmingham or Black, Blackburn in the next round of the Cup? Again, that's a decent draw, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it is. Um, our home main thing, first home game in the FA Cup this season so far. And, you know, again, two championship teams, one's fighting for um, playoff places, one's towards the middle or bottom. can't remember where, but... Um, yeah, definitely happy at home. And if we get Birmingham, be at least a in this derby. So, yeah, it'd be a good game if we forget Birmingham. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, we want everybody's views. Keep getting your views and your comments in. Um, LCFC Gray says we look shabby first half. Um, Kevin saying here we desperately need a striker in this window. Dakar is awful. Kels, Kels barely starts and Vards is getting a bit injury prone uh, as of late. I'm going to go back there to Tom on the DACA front. Uh, again, I'm not going to lay into him. I was quite interested watching the match of the day uh, punditry on DACA where they were sort of they were sort of saying, look, the guy's getting in the right locations, Tom, but it's that end product. Um, I, again, Nacho comes on and scores, but no doubt Nacho won't start on Saturday away at Villa, will he, Tom? We know that. Adi Akimba used to get into great chances, but he couldn't put the ball in the net. <laughs> it's true, though, mate. You know, I remember Akimba and do some great chances through and goal. He couldn't put the ball in the net. And it's starting to get those same vibes with Dakar now. The, uh, the chances he had on Saturday, I mean, there was a couple of half decent that I thought he should have done better, really, with the one way Pede rolled it to the goalie from you know, 10, 12 yards out. I'm expecting to get a lot more power on it and get that, you know, really getting it, putting the goal in some pressure couple of diving headers. Look, he's making the right runs and I really hope it comes, but Duck has never scored goals in this season. I just, there's just something about him that I really hope he can do it, but we're still talking about replacing Jamie Vardy and Jamie Vardy has now come to the last 18 months of his contract. At the time, Rogers signed him from, I think Rogers Vogs, he'd got the replacement he wanted. Uh, going to Villa, we all, for me, it's a no-brainer. The front three pick himself going into that game should be Tete, Barnes and uh, Nacho. That mm -hmm. should be the front three with uh, Madison, uh, probably Mendy. And then the, it's a toss-up there between Jews, Paul and Tillemans for me, who plays that in another one. That that front five, you know, should really picks himself now. And Nacho deserves his chance. He really does. You can't keep just dropping him to the bench every time after an FA Cup tie. And every time he scores, mm -hmm. what's he doing for his confidence? He's a confidence player. To me now, Dak has had enough chances. It's all about giving Nacho a run in the team and a run, at, you know, a really good go at trying to get some stability up front and someone that's actually going to play that every single week because Vardy can't do it now. And Dak at the moment isn't showing the form to do it. So why not have that Nacho? You've got the next five games and go and say to him, next five games you are going to start. Here's your opportunity. Try and take it and get some goals. I'm going to come to Reedy next and ask him about Tete because Ben wants to know. He's actually asked Tom, but I'm going to ask you, Reedy, what your thoughts are on him. But uh, Andy says Nacho and Daka are not Premier League strikers in there. Carlos, good evening, says, do you know where we are in the option to buy Tete after the summer? We need a new striker. Well, he's obviously part of the Ukraine uh, Shakhtar Donetsk uh, 
the whole UEFA European thing. So I think that is out of our hands because I think all the players will go back to their form at their home clubs uh, in the Ukrainian league, which is quite right too, because else it's not very fair on those clubs. Um, yes, Tom. I'm just going to say the whole thing with Tete. One, yes, he will go back to Shakhtar on yeah. January, July the 10th, I think it is. But his contract runs out on January the 1st. So there is an opportunity. January the, the 1st summer. or June the 1st? No, January the 1st next year, his contract runs out. So there is oh, an opportunity yeah. for Leicester in the summer to put a, a a contract together for him to get him secured from January next year. But it's also leads away that the club could put a bid in for him in the summer and make it happen in the summer. But if it worst case scenario, Leicester could lose him for six months again somewhere and then sign me on a pre-contract to come back in January next year. You know what I mean? So it's not all like it can't happen. It could happen easily still. It will be an interesting one. Let's get a couple of comments in before I go to Reedy on that one. Uh, the Foxes season says Vardy has strength and goals. Dakar lacks both in there. Um, LCFC Gray says we can't replace Vardy. Uh, it's like Marez. You're probably right. Vardy's, listen, I've watched Leicester for 47 years or something now, and Vardy is a once in a massive generational thing. You're not going to get that again. So I don't ever look at Dakar and think he's going to replace Vardy. Um, the councillor says Roger's treatment of Kelechi and Acho deserves a formal grievance in there. Uh, the, Jordan says Dakar isn't physical enough either. Jono says Tete, Madison, Nacho, Dakar, Barnes. On paper, that could be amazing. And that's really why I'm going to switch it over to you, mate. Um, Tete, on Saturday, what, what do you make of that as a signing? And will he start, Reedy? Uh, well, we've always been asking for a winger in the right winger area as well uh, since Mara's left and we've had the racks of Gazelle and we've had the racks of Under in and none of them's really claimed that spot and stayed in that role uh, for a few years. So now we've got someone in. I will admit from what I've seen from highlights and a reel and what, he, what he's shown, I, I, am, I ain't too optimistic with him. Um, but at least we've got that position in now instead of using people out of position like Madison and Perez. So... And going into Villa, you kind of have to put him in there because if not, then you kind of play it again. People out of position in the likes of Madison or Perez or if Perez is leaving, then it will be Madison. But now you brought him in and the likes of Christiansen, these, kind, these sort of players have to be getting into that first team if you want to be trying to change, change and impact the games. Yeah, indeed. Let's get Jono's views. Jono, what, what's your take on Tete? Are you quite happy with that? Or, do you, you know, I'm not seeing loads yeah. about him. I mean, at the moment, we need to give another winger a try. We can't keep on putting Mares or on the wing. We can't keep on putting Perez on the wing. Perez, you know, he's had a few good moments for Leicester, but I'm happy he's going to another club. He deserves it, to be honest. Like, he deserves a club that he gets played in a proper position. But I think we need a decent winger with pace. And we always play better. As soon as Christensen came on for left-back for Thomas, we looked like a different team. Like, we need those attacking fullbacks and with Tete on the right and Barnes on the left, you know, we have full attacking again. So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing Tete play. But if, if he doesn't play Tete on Sunday, I think on Saturday we'll really, really struggle against Villa. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. Keep getting your views, getting your comments in. Uh, let us know. The Fox's season says here both new lads have to start for me. Throw them in. I I'm with you on that. If you bought players, we've just we're in the Premier League. We're, we're not in the greatest run, so I would definitely say you buy a buy a winger. You got to start him in there. Um, Nick says, "How can you not be impressed, Reed? Are you just miserable that your team Forest is getting John Joe Shelby?" Uh, <laughs> listen, I, we had Nick. We had this debate in the office earlier. I actually wouldn't have minded a bit of John Joe Shelby in the Leicester side in the middle to give a bit of bite, but hey. You know I think, me, I know I think Shelby's before. about 10 years too late, I think. And for me, I'm not trying to be like already shutting down Tete's kind of ability, but from what I've seen from videos and what he's done at the other clubs, it's just not too special compared to what we know we can get, I guess. So. Yeah, I, listen, me and Reedy, we watched the same video, Tom, earlier. We were trying to, we were like, because I worked in the office today and I said, look, how much do you, I, this, I've not really known much about Tete. I've seen him draped in a Brazilian flag and I'm like, have I missed it? Has he played for Brazil? Is, is he like, you know, the next whatever? And, and these were like, let's have a look. So we go on YouTube and you watch the highlights, real Tom. And to be fair, it was 
it was okay, but I was like, <laughs> crikey. I, I wasn't wowed, Tom. I, like, I think that's all Reed is saying is like, you know, how good is this guy? We'll YouTube, find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's true, you know, I will never judge someone on YouTube because we all can make an amazing video of, of like 10 seconds or 20 seconds of brilliance out of five seasons. You know, it's, it's so easy to do. You could you could make Adi Akinbai look like the world-class striker he used to be. doesn't mean he's a world-class striker. Mm. It, it's one of those. It, YouTube is amazing with some amazing videos on and some of them players deserve to have a video. Some players just get a video made up because, one, the agents want to sell. And I do believe some of these agents put them on there to try and get some of these pushed through and get their names out there. And two, just, you know, I, I just don't know. YouTube's not everything to believe. I'll believe him when I sit on Saturday. But like you say, Phil, for me, if you buy them, you play them. He's brought him on loan. Yeah. There should be no more mucking around. You need to change what we're doing. And Madison needs to go back to the 10 position and not be stuck out on the right and having to cut inside. And it's just one of those. Christensen looks exciting. Really does. I, I think you said earlier how I feel. This is the first time in a long time I'm going to a game with a bit of optimism. Yeah. I haven't all season. And I've really gone in games going... <sighs> another Leicester game we're going to watch what's going to happen you know not really thinking we've got much chance in them and I've never been like that watching Leicester but this season under Rodgers it's been tough again and I generally like now I'm a bit like actually we've signed a few players and if we can get a couple more through the door it builds even more optimism what the club are doing you know finally the club I'm spending some money and signing some players so look not excited by Jack Harrison I'll put that out there now I think there's no addition to what you got with Harvey Barnes he doesn't offer any difference his goal to game ratios his pants compared to Barnes, if you're going to buy that, and his assists ain't that great. So, look, if you're going to buy a left wing, I'm sure there's probably more exciting ones out there, but I suppose it gives you another option on the left-hand side and gives Barnes a bit of competition. That's what we need. I mean, Jono, we've, we've obviously, over the last couple of years, Jono, we've, this winger role, probably since Merez, has been a tricky one for Leicester. We had uh, Under come in, and we didn't really play Under, give him much of a chance. I'd, I'd almost say, Jono, we didn't really give Luckman that much of a go there, um, but we probably saw enough from him. Is he, is he going to do the same with Tete, where you go, you've got a winger and he doesn't play week in, week out? I think letting like, no, Luckman go was, I think, was a bit bad because you're looking under now in Serie A and he's just doing absolute bits. You know, he's scoring against Juventus, he's doing a lot of good stuff. Maybe we'll just be in skin. Maybe we're like, well, we've had a winger. Maybe we can save a bit of money, play play Madison or keep Paris, put him on the wing. Hasn't worked out. You know, we either go down the middle or go down the left. That doesn't work. We're stuffed. So I think it's really good that we've we, we've got a new winger, but we've just got to splash the cash out on the winger. We, just, we, we can't keep on going to Madison or Paris because it ain't going to work. Madison's going to probably go to Newcastle. Paris is on his way out. What are we going to do next? Put Vestergaard on the way? I don't know. But we, we need... We need a good winger, and we better sign. We need Tate. Let's hope it works out. We've got, there's quite a lot of people, um, and I'll come to Reedy on this one first. Andrew says here we, we have put this bid in for Sutar. Reedy, what, what's your take on that? Well, let's just say we need to replace Samati, don't we? As much as he's done okay the last, well, partly in this season, obviously getting a load of clean sheets in a row. Um, but other than that. He's always got a mistake in him, and we all we can all admit that. So I just don't think he's to the quality we need in that centre back role. So I think anyone who is a out and out like full on centre back will be better than someone like Amati will be. And even me and you feel have said that when he passes the ball, he, every single pass you just think he's lunging or struggling to make the pass because of he's not got the ability yeah. to do it. Is Vestergaard your favourite defender? There shouldn't be. He'd be playing in um, centre back for you. Well, I was saying that we've got two Premier League standard left uh, centre backs. No, no, Vestergaard's not. No, no, Vestergaard's not Premier League standard. I'm sorry. I'm fine. I'm, I'm sorry. He is. It's not. He is. He is. He's, He's he playing play for Southampton for, for the last like six or seven years. He is Premier League proven. We scored nine goals against him. He's still Premier League proven. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just, I'm just letting these two. Uh, I tell you, who is Premier League proven is Kaglar Soyunku. There was talk mm -hmm. of him going to Man City for fifty million pounds. He is Premier League proven. Uh, it just, I, I keep knocking my head against the wall, thinking we've got a centre back on the bench. They just, they just decided, Tom, just for some at some point that Soyunku no more plays for Leicester City, Tom, and it just seems like 
ready-made centre-back could play. Not good in a full season, but then he plays him against Manchester City for one game and then takes him out. Eh? <laughs> plays him against the best team in the world, the best the, the, the champions of England, and then dropped him like a, a stone into a pond and just disappears underneath, for gone and forgotten. Uh, what can we say? It looks like Cags might be out the door by the end of tomorrow. You know, yeah, it looks like Philippe might be going to Knott's Forest, I think is correct. And so, what then would open the door for Atletico to push to get the move through earlier? Well, it means Leicester are then going to have to spend some money quickly to get a replacement, if that is the case. Uh, I still think you're about five minutes short to where Stoke are going to value Suter. Uh, the rumours is that they want around 20 million for him, what I've been reading, and what I've seen is the, the 15 million might be still a little short of what they're going to be asking for. I think you're looking 15 to 20, somewhere around the 18 million pound mark to get the man we want. That's a lot of money for a, a, a young, young lad and, and expect him to come into the Premier League, even if he's an Australian international and be able to play with well, Faz at the back and change our defensive situation around. You know, I would have preferred to keep Cags even if he goes in the end of the season and play him, play him every week till the end of the season. But yeah. Daniel Marty's great and he's been brilliant for us, but Every time you watch him, you're waiting for that clang. You're waiting for that mistake on the ball. And look, let's not get it wrong. He's not a centre half. I know he plays it for his country. We brought him as a defensive midfielder all those years ago when we won the Premier League. So it's a strange one that he's been put into the centre half and had to play when you've got likes of Vestergaard and uh, Cags on the bench. But I just think we're missing new it by not playing Cags more. You've got to build his confidence. So I said it the other day. He's Rogers is the elite manager, but he keeps going on about it and everyone keeps talking about it. he's an elite manager. Then surely he turns the form around. He managed to turn the form around in Madison when it was going to put kaput last season. Why can't he do the same with Cags? For me, it's a trust issue. I generally don't feel that Rogers trusts Cags to play the way we want to play. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one. Uh, Jono, uh, Tom's already said Harrison from Leeds he's not interested in. Tom said that. I've seen a few comments in, uh, I think Sondrax was saying that there's no way that uh, Jack Harrison's going to come to Leicester. What's, do you think we need somebody like that? The only reason why I think we need a winger is one, to give Barnes a rest. And two, it's really said we need competition. You know, there's players that have gotten so comfortable with their position. They can play like rubbish and still get picked. Like, um, like Daka, for example, like, you know, he's not playing very well, but, you know, we've got two of the strikers there, but he's just sitting there like he knows, Daka knows he plays rubbish and he still gets picked. So we need a position where Barnes needs to go, right, if we, under the left wing is coming, I need to fight for my position. I need to score goals and play well or I'm not going to be picked. You know, the same as for Tielemans, you know, we need, that's when you need another midfielder because if he, Tielemans doesn't play well, he's not playing. He did it, but I think, wasn't, didn't Rogers do it against, after the Forest game, you know, he had a, he said, look, like players aren't playing well and he swapped them all over. So we need more of that. We need more competitive positions in the team. OK, so listen, here, I'm going to ask each one of you, Tom, Reedy and Jono this. And I want people who are watching this. I want to know, and I'll start with you, Tom. What What is a good result between now and the end of the transfer window? Between now and then, who, who do you think, Tom, we need to go, need to get rid of? And who do you think we need to bring in? Obviously, get rid, if we can get rid of Vestergaard and Bertrand, that takes a massive chunk out of your age bill of what 150 grand a week. So that's a Tom. That's a start. Tom, no, nobody's nobody's taking Bertrand anywhere. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to get you have to get a crutch for him. Like, hang, hang on, hang on. I'm going to Google how many games he's played for him. What what I meant was, it's we'll get you and get one free with yeah. Vestergaard, mate. If you buy Vestergaard, <laughs> you get one Bertrand free as the deal goes. I don't through. think that's you'd give him away. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, but I agree. Obviously, if Cags is not going to play, then obviously you offload Cags. For me, then you have to go and sign a centre half. And look, if if there is the talk of Jack Harrison coming, yes, it gives us an option on the wing. Does it excite me? No, but I still think you need two more players in the door. If you get two more through, it's been for me an outstanding transfer window in some ways that you've managed to get four players through. You'll never know though until they gel as a team. <laughs> as I'm just going to say West Ham have just scored and Bowden, who a player that I said we should have gone for two or three years ago from Hall, has just put the net in and Derby are losing. So that's probably made my night so that's far. Good. So let, let's take that now then. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching this, let us know who do you think we should get rid of before 11 o'clock tomorrow night and who do you think we should get in? Let's go to you, Reedy, with that. Who do you think Who do you think we should be getting rid of tomorrow in a last-ditch like sales uh, bargain basement, as Tom's talking about? And who would you like to get in? Well, I don't think anyone is going to go anywhere. 
Um, but I do think the likes of Perez, who has been linked away, um, and the likes of... I'm just, I'm just trying to think, like, Pratt was even linked with the, the Torino kind of Great. switch. Um, so I wasn't too sure on that. But players are wanting. I'd, I'd be happy to take Jack Harrison. Obviously, I'd probably say he's up, probably up to the level of Barnes on form. But... At the moment, Barnes is awful, so you kind of got to bring someone in to hopefully give a bit of a challenge to him. And then a centre-back. I think after that, I think we're pre- pretty much covered in where we wanted to kind of improve in the squad anyway. So a, a winger and, well, a, a versatile winger or striker and a centre-back. Jono, I'm going to slightly spin it to you, mate, because Curtis says here, do you think Yuri's had it for us or not? Do you think he's bothered or not? And and then he doesn't quite finish that sentence off. But Jono, I guess my question to you is, I'm slightly surprised nobody's come in for Yuri or Madders properly in this transfer window. Is there any bit of you slightly worried, especially on the Madison side, Jono, that somebody might come in at the death tomorrow? Because there was talk that Newcastle have put in another bid today. I don't know if you saw that, but... No, because Leicester, if Leicester, it's like with the um, Fafana situation, like as soon as we got rid of Fafana, we got root phase, you know, there's not enough time between now and tomorrow to find a decent enough replacement with Madison, because without Madison, we look pants. So Rogers knows how much of a key figure is for the team and matter, you know, how many bids come in, we're not going to let him go because he's under contract. We don't have to sell him. So... Therefore, we're not going to sell him. But in terms of the transfers and stuff, there's one position which we need to fill that no one's mentioned, and that is the goalkeeper. We're never going to yes. fill that up. Yep. Because We've got three Danny Ward is never not good happen. enough. Danny Ward's not good enough. You know what? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I definitely think we should have gone for a new I keeper. Jono, but... It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. happen. We've got happen. three keepers for a reason. It's, it, we need a goalkeeper. I'm, Eve, I, Everson just... You know, he, how many cleans he's had? He, like he's had a few clean sheets. He played really well in the Warsaw game. Just play him, Danny Ward. He, he had like six games before the, before the World Cup where he didn't concede, but now he's just flopping. Rogers, he's like a Rogers, out of water. Rogers will not drop a goalkeeper that he turned around and put on compare with away at Watford when he says I've got two number ones. He's not going to not play Danny Ward because if he doesn't, he has to go back on everything he said about Danny Ward being his number one. Not going to do it. In the summer, yeah, you might have to look at the option and think it's not worth out this year with Danny Ward. But at the moment in time, well, much we're all going to have to, he's got to play Everson. He's not going to play him. It's simple as that. Everson will be a cup goalkeeper and Danny Ward will be the Premier League goalkeeper. But, and uh, Danny and Ward will start the rest I, of the season I, in the Premier League. I've got to say, Reedy, I didn't think Everson was that amazing on Saturday. No, I thought he, he the, looked, the, he, the you know, he doesn't is, play every week. But... The fact is, even with Everson, it doesn't matter. We brought in Smithies. That, alone will stop us buying a keeper. We're not going to buy. We're not going to have four keepers in this squad. We are not. If we didn't buy him and then we bought a first choice instead of a third, maybe so. But even if... But this is where... If you don't think Ward's good enough, and Tom is completely right, we're not going to change it. But you've just got to give Iverson a chance. If we're not going to bring a keeper in, you've just got to give him a chance. But it's not going to happen. So there's no point even really thinking about just getting a goalkeeper in. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Listen, uh, we will go live tomorrow at any point when when something's transfers confirmed, either in or out. So it will be interesting. Tom, I believe you've got an away fan show this Wednesday night. Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, the Royal Paul McGrath. They'll be joining us as we build up to uh, Villa Way on Saturday. Obviously, I'll go live outside the ground when we get the tea news on Saturday morning. And I'm, I'm sure that there'll be a watch long again on Sunday, Saturday. And obviously, as usual, the famous Aftermath show. Apparently, he's got a pair of tits on this week, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Definitely not are me. You on it? Are, you, are you on it again, Tom, then? Oh, apparently, he might be getting a tit, so yeah, apparently so. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. And, Reedy, uh, hopefully you'll be doing a match preview this week with Sam. Yes, probably Thursday, maybe Friday at some point. There'll be one going live or pre-recorded for you lot to watch uh, for the, the pre-match show. Brilliant. All right, I'm going to say thanks a lot to everybody. 
Uh, Jono, thanks for joining us. Tom, thanks for joining us. And thanks, Reedy, as well. I'll let you guys go. Thanks so much. Um, it's been great having the lads on and getting their views about all the transfers, but it's been great getting your views on. Let's get the last couple on screen. Jono says we need five to six players in the summer. I agree with Jono. I think we've just got to try and get to the summer and make sure we stay in the Premier League. That is what this season is now about. I almost wonder, has the board and Brendan sat down and said, look, this season is a write-off. Let's just get get to that summer and then have that massive rebuild when you can let six or seven players go whose contracts are finished. It will help sort things out. But as John says, it's a massive rebuild across the summer. The keeper will be part of that business. I think you're right in there, to be fair. Uh, Daniel says tits out for Tom. Yeah, why not? I mean, I could ask him now. Let, let's see. Will he, will, no, he's, he's in the green room behind the scenes. He's nodding his head or shaking his head, saying he won't do that. I'm sorry about that for you. I'll try it for you, Daniel. Steve says, Rogers is a problem because he has changed the usual position for Dakar and Nacho is lacking in game time. Listen, I, I should be getting more excited about these transfers. I just, I'm trying not to be negative. I just feel... Give it a while and then we'll, we'll just still be doing the same stuff. We'll be passing it around. And if Tete's an attacking midfielder, imagine imagine if we signed Riyad Mahrez now. We'd probably tell him to not go on a wonderful, mazy run. We'd probably tell him to pass it sidewards. That That is what I'm a bit worried about with this lot at the moment. Will, Will Brother Will says Rogers out. He's gone. I think a lot of fans have gone. I'm, I am keeping the faith because Rogers is in. Let's back the lads on Saturday. Let's hope we get. A big win because there's some tough, tough games coming after that. So, listen, thanks to everybody who's watched. We're live every Monday, 7.30 till 8. It's time for me to go. I'll see you at the match and I'll see you soon. Thanks all for watching. Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, ADT Taxis, Everards, Pucka Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Leicester Riders, Hologram, The Fox's Arms, Peter's Pizzeria, Hope Against Cancer, and Newbie and Co Estate Agents. Make sure to follow us on all of our social channels at Leicester Fan TV. Visit our website, LeicesterFanTV.com.